Okay, so we're going to review a little bit more bio stuff. The first thing is kind of random, it's enzymes. Enzymes are an organic material, they're a protein, and they are catalysts, like you learned in chemistry. So the first thing, they're organic catalysts, and what they do is they speed up chemical reactions. They basically make them happen. Without enzymes, chemical reactions in our body would take way too long, and it, your body wouldn't be good like that. Okay, so enzymes are organic, they speed up chemical reactions, um, and they're proteins. That's about it for enzymes. So the next thing is all about cell transport. So the first thing to remember is that a cell membrane is semi-permeable. That means it only lets in certain things. Okay. Um, some things that can't get in are things that are too big. Um, so only lets in certain things. No big stuff is the gist there. Okay. Cell transport is the most common one is diffusion. And you always see diffusion set up something like this. So you have uh, a beaker with some kind of liquid, and then you have a cell inside of it. And you're assuming that this cell has a semi-permeable membrane. Okay. So um, imagine that this cell is very concentrated with glucose and water. Glucose is small, so it can diffuse through the membrane. Okay, and imagine that the cell is sitting in fresh water, 100% water. All right. The important thing to remember about diffusion, obviously, it's molecules moving across a membrane. Diffusion is always going to be moving from high concentration to low concentration, right? So in the case of diffusion, you're looking at the solute glucose. So if this on the environment is 100% water, that means we have 0% glucose on the outside. And you have to ask yourself, okay, where is the concentration of glucose higher? Right? The concentration is higher inside the cell, lower outside. So that means the glucose is going to leave the cell. Um, this happens all because molecules are moving around all the time, and the glucose basically wants to spread out. It, the cell wants to be the same as the environment. Again, to be in homo homeostasis. Okay, it's going to spread out and until the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell have the same concentrations. Okay. If you have something like this, where, again, you have 100% water, and let's say in this cell you have 20% glucose and 80% water. Again, ask yourself what's going to happen to the glucose. The concentration of glucose is still higher inside of the cell than it is outside, so that means it's going to move out. However, the difference here is this cell has much more glucose, much more of a concentration of glucose than this one does. So this glucose is going to move much faster. So that's what a concentration gradient is. So let's make this a little bit better. So a concentration gradient is 
basically the difference in con in concentrations out inside the cell and outside of the cell. So this concentration gradient is very steep. You have 80 and 0. This concentration gradient is not very steep. You have 20 and 0. So this is going to move very fast out of the cell. This is just going to kind of trickle out. Okay. So the concentration gradient, um, how do we put this in words, is defined by how um, by how different the concentrations are, how great of a difference there is. Okay, so you can have a steep concentration gradient, which means a big difference. That's supposed to be a D, which means the molecules are going to move fast. If you have um, a lower concentration gradient like this one, it's going to be the opposite. They're not going to come out as fast. Okay. So that's diffusion. Oh, so diffusion goes with the concentration gradient. It goes along with it. Okay. Osmosis is focusing on the movement of water. It is diffusion, but it's only looking at the movement of water. Okay, so that means if you have the same little setup of the beaker and the cell, 100% water, and here you have 20% glucose, 80% water. When you're talking about osmosis, you look at the water. So you ask yourself again, where's the concentration of water the highest? Out here. Where's it low? Here. So the water is going to move in. Let's not do, you know what? It's not going to be glucose. Osmosis happens when things cannot move through the membrane, so it would be something big like starch. Okay. So osmosis still moves from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water. Okay, so if we have this one, let's say this is 50% starch, 50% water. And out here we have 100% uh, water. We're talking about osmosis because starch can't move, so that means the water is going to go in from high to low. The cell is going to swell up. As far as knowing which one I'm talking, which one I'm asking you about, diffusion or osmosis, I'll always let you know. I'll always ask you a question like, where's the water going to go? Or where's the glucose going to go? So that you know what I'm asking you for. When the last thing is when you have diffusion like this going from a high concentration to a low concentration or osmosis that requires no ATP so if we go um, we don't use any ATP when the molecules are moving with the concentration gradient If for some reason we have a cell like this that's, uh, let's do 30% glucose. And out here we have 10% glucose. So then let's say this is 70 water and this is 90% water. If for some reason this cell needs more glucose, that's going against the concentration gradient. What would happen here is the glucose would go out, going from a high to a low. But if for whatever reason you want to move in the opposite direction, that's going to cause, um, that's going to need ATP. So if 
um, the cell needs to go against the concentration gradient. Then ATP is needed. And that is called active transport. So that's pretty easy because if you think about being active, you're using energy. If you're using energy, you're going against the concentration gradient from low to high instead of high to low. Okay, so that's basically what you missed on Thursday. Let me know if you have any other questions.